the back. So good afternoon guys. Um, my name is Su and today I'm going to talk about WatchKit which was uh, introduced by Apple. Uh, it is a WatchKit uh, was introduced to developers around two to three weeks ago, so it's fairly new. And um, there is a guide by Apple which provides very little information about WatchKit. So a lot of time what we have to do is kind of reverse engineer what needs to be done and how you do things. And also you go to Apple forums to find out how other people are, other developers are doing things. So I have very few slides, maybe eight to nine slides where I kind of talk about uh, the architecture and um, various components of WatchKit, but then later I'll show you how to build a uh, watch app uh, with uh, Swift. So I currently work for PayPal, and uh, I also organize uh, the iOS developer meetups in Singapore, uh, and uh, the group name is iOS Dev Scout. So if you're interested to know more about iOS development, or uh, learn about iOS development, then you can come to one of our meetups. I also write on this uh, site called raywindelish.com, which is uh, very famous for iOS tutorial sites. Uh, they have a lot of um, written tutorials and video tutorials. So um, they, they talk about how to build apps using Objective-C and Swift both. And if you are learning iOS, you can, you can uh, go to raywindelish.com and uh, find out more information. So let's talk about WatchKit and how it works. So basically, if you're building a watch app, um, it works with your iPhone application. So you cannot build, at this point, you cannot build a standalone watch app with um, uh, that won't pair with iPhone. So if you, let's say ha you have an Android phone, you can have a watch app uh, that will run. So the things that uh, that is there on on your watch app is mostly views. So you'll be drawing the views on the watch app, and there's something called watch extension that resides on your iPhone um, application, and your code actually executes on the iPhone app. So your your view components or the static images or assets that resides on your watch app. So when you build your app, when you use your tabs on certain uh, buttons or certain you know, um, uh, other controls on, on the watch app, the code actually executes on, on the phone. And in order to create your watch app, you basically create a new extension. Uh, I'll show you in a while how to do that. And there are three ways you can present your contents. One is basically the watch app, which you can kind of uh, launch from the home screen of the watch, which will probably where most of your focus will go into. And this will provide a uh, you know, UI to users to do various things which works with your iPhone application. But there is another interface which is a glance. This provides a minimum information to your user. You, know, um, you can think about this as a two-day extension if you have kind of used iOS 8 and you have um, seen in the notification center, you can drag the notification center, you can see different things uh, on the today extension, things like, you know, how many tweets you have or how many messages you have or things like, let's say, if you are using a um, fitness kind of uh, application, can show how many calories you burn. So those kind of things you can show in glance, but the main catch here is on glance, you can't have any buttons. On the watch app, if you present a lot of contents, the first one, um, then it will scroll, but the glance won't scroll. So whatever you need to present, this needs to fit in the, within the screen of the watch. And you can't have any button on the glance. It's basically whatever minimum information you want to provide to your users. And there is a third type, which is notification. Um, let's say if you have an iOS application and you don't have a watch app yet, your users will still receive the notification on watch, even though you don't have a watch app yet. But you can customize your notifications if you have a watch app. I'll show you all the three types today. And let's dive into Xcode to build stuff. So you need Xcode uh, 6.2. You can uh, go to 
Okay, I think I need a Wi-Fi. While it's loading, I can show you here. So 6.2 is in beta now. Uh, I have some application that I built yesterday, the various different types I'll show you in a while. Um, but let's create a new one. As I mentioned, it needs to work with your iPhone application or iOS application. You need to build an iPhone application or iOS application. Let's tell it. Uh, Hello Watch or something. Well, let's call it just So this is my standard iPhone application without anything. If I run this pressing or playing the button, it just launches the uh, iPhone application. By default, the watch simulator won't be visible. You can, uh, while your iPhone simulator is running, you can go to hardware, and underneath there is external display. This is where you can choose the different type of um, watch simulator. They come in two different uh, sizes. Uh, the bigger one is 42 mm, and the smaller one is 38 mm. So you can choose uh, uh, the simulator of your choice for the watch app. And. Uh, you can create a target if you, let's say, you can create a target going to the root folder and you tap on the plus button here. And that's where you can create various extensions. You can create extension for your iPhone application, but you can also create a watch app extension. This is where you select watch app. And uh, by default, it won't allow you to edit the product name. And you can choose whatever the default one is. I'll disable the notification scene for now just to create it simple watch app now and I'll click on finish but that will create two things one is the watch app and another one is a watch kit extension the watch kit extension reside in in your iPhone application or it works along with your iPhone appli application this is where you'll, you'll write your code and the watch app itself is the storyboard basically it's the view if you're thinking about model view controller and only the view part resides inside your watch app. And you have various libraries here. And uh, these are the different controllers I'll, I'll come to in a while. But you have things like images. You have separator. Separator is a new control. You don't see it um, for iOS apps. Let me just drag a label. Let's say I just drag a label. And I'll change the text to, let's say, hello world. I'll make it to center. And if I go to the interface control and I tap on this, I change the color to something else. Let's say this is my static screen for my watch app. And now I need to change the target to watch app here. And I'll run this application. And you see, this is the watch app that will be displayed here. Now, there are various other controls that you can use. At this point, on the iPhone application, if your app is on, you can browse other apps. But on the watch simulator, you can't see other apps that are there. You can just see your application, the current one that's running. Let me go ahead and add some more things here. Let's say, let me go ahead and um, add a separator here I'll just add a separator I'll add an image and let's say I'll add a button right I'll probably add a slider here there are a few things I added and for my image let's say you want to add an image to my folder 
Yes, I just use this one, the flappy board icon, and I just use this one. So now, if I build my application, you'll see some more controls are here. It fits to the screen, but it allows you to kind of um, scroll, and you can do things here. You can uh, change these things. Let's hook it up with our code in the WatchKit extension and see how it works. Let's say, for example, let's say I remove the image for now. And let's say I remove the button now. And uh, I just link up this thing, the slider. And when the value of the slider changes, I just want to print something uh, to the log. The same way you used to work uh, with iPhone application, you just launch the assistant editor and you control drag to your class file, class implementation, change it to an action because this is an action. Let's say my slider changed. Now this on this beta version it gives an error, it's a compiler error. That uh, this float this float it's basically a struct, and it kind of, when you're linking it with your storyboard, it doesn't recognize it. So you can just remove this IB accent part. It will still work. This will kind of get rid of the error. Uh, but it's still linked with your uh, code, and it will work. Now let's say I just want to, this is Swift I'm using here uh, instead of Objective-C. So if I run the app now, and this is my console basically, and I will change and it kind of gives me the values. And I can convert it or typecast it to an integer and I can uh, display integer. But yeah, this is about control. Now I'll talk a little bit about the styling. How how do you basically style your um, UI in Watch app? In iOS, it was allowed for you to overlap components. So let's say if, if you have a label, you can overlap another label on top of that, you know, uh, or you can, you can overlap an image on top of uh, another image, or you can overlap a label on top of another label. But in WatchKit, every view component needs to have its own space. You can't over overlap things. And as you drag more stuff, let me drag another image or something. If I move to this thing, it kind of asks me, okay, where you want to put it, on top or on bottom? It stacks vertically. But if you want to kind of put things side by side, then there is this thing called a group that you need to use. But for now, let's say I uh, add two more buttons here. And it kind of increases. And this separator component you can uh, use to kind of uh, put a visual uh, break in your UI. You can use this thing of switch, switch as a title, and all those things. Now, this kind of gives me more space to play with. But as I mentioned, how do you basically? put things side by side. Let's say I get rid of all these things. I get rid of the separator as well. Let's say I have an image. I, I want to put a label beside an image. How do I do that? So there's this thing called group. You drag a group. You can put a group inside a group. But let's just start with one group. And you can put an image inside a group. Let me change the image to, this is really big. Uh, 
and I'll put a label. Let me use two labels for now. In the group, you have things like how you want your layout to be displayed, whether horizontal or vertical. If you change it to vertical, it will align them vertically. If you change it to horizontal, it will put them side by side. And you have positioning, how you want an individual element to be positioned. Let's say you want it to be you know, horizontally left and vertically centered. OK, you can do that. And then you have the separator. I want the separator to be horizontally center, and I want this text to be horizontally right, let's say, and I want it to be also vertically center. So this kind of creates a new interface or uh, view for me, where I, I can put things side by side. But let's say, Sometimes you want things to be equally spaced. How do you position them equally? Let's say I want this hello to be you know, occupying the exact half of my, my view. And I want the other label to occupy exact half of the other view. But this is where the size will come into picture. You can choose uh, size fit content. That means it will, uh, it will occupy the full space. Or you can choose a size relative to your parent container. So let's say I can specify, okay, this thing will be 0 0.5, and the other one also needs to be 0 0.5. Now, if you see, I use if I use both the thing at 0 0.5, the separator is gone because I'm using the full space of the container now. The separator is gone. This is where I can make some adjustment. I can point a negative value, and the separator will appear. So even if I'm using the half space, I put a negative value to kind of adjust that. So this is about your view components, how you do, you know, draw view components. I'll show another demo that I had created yesterday. Over here, I have one um, interface controller, and this is my main entry. And I have some some things uh, that it will go to once I click on certain buttons. So this is my view, and as I change the slider, it changes the images, and it basically displays a mode. And if I change it to, let's say, the maximum, OK, this, the guy is angry. It, it displays uh, 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 those texts also. So how do we do that over here? In the controllers, you have uh, three different type of controllers. Interface controller, a glance controller, and a notification controller. Glance, as I mentioned, it will be displayed. Uh, it is used to display a very minimum content about your uh, application. You shouldn't put any button over glance. Actually, uh, the storyboard won't allow you to put any controls in the glance. And notification is where you will uh, display notification to the user. By default, everything else is interface controller. So let's say I have another interface controller. And I have a button. And when I press this button, I want the second one to be displayed. Let's say I change the color to something else, red. 
and when I press this button, I want the second one to be displayed. I can just control and drag to my second one and create a segue. Uh, it's basically, you can say whether you want to push the new thing uh, to the navigation or you want to present it from the bottom. If you choose push, it will just push to the stack. Now if I tap on the button, it displays a new screen over here and you have a back button here. Now think comes what kind of apps you will build for the watch. Like, so you think about a watch app as an extension to your main application. It stays with your user all the time. And one of the very example, you know, uh, uh, interesting example can be this application, which is the Lister application, which is basically a, uh, to do kind of or shopping cart kind of application where you have uh, an iPhone application where you have things that you want to buy, let's say you have groceries that you want to buy, milk and bread and all those things. For guys it's okay, you know, we use our phone uh, in our pocket uh, most of the time but for girls they usually carry their phone in the uh, bag or sometimes, you know, if you have the phone in a bag you don't want to, bring, you know, bring it out and check what are the things that we need to uh, carry home. So this is a very good example of uh, the type of applications you can build. And if I use this This is still in beta, the uh, 6.2. So, if sometimes you have some issues in the simulator, you kind of heal the simulator and launch it again. So, this is my main lister application, the iPhone application. And this is the watch app. So if you see, both both of these things have uh, you know the same kind of items. And let's say I go to groceries, and I you know, uncheck this apple from here. So I have three items here, and this thing should appear. But again, because the screen of the watch app is too small, you probably don't want to show information that are not relevant. For example, on the iPhone, you are showing, okay, what are completed. On watch app, it, it might not make sense. You just want to show user what are the things they need to buy or what are the things they, they, that are pending. So just, let's see what else you can, you can do. I'll create a glance now. I'll just uh, drag a glance interface controller here. And the glass has two groups. I'll delete these groups. Okay, maybe I'll just put stuff in there. So it needs to have a title. I'll make it horizontally center. number of lines you can increase and these groups uh, you can also style a little bit if you want to although it's not necessary because groups are mostly being used to put things side by side or align other view components but let's say if you want to change or put a uh, color background color for your group you can do that as well uh, and if you want to put a background image also you can do that let's say this is how my glance will look like 
But by default, you won't have glance here because when you create your OHAP target, you will only have the OHAP target there. That's where you need to manage your schemes and uh, duplicate this one, duplicate the scheme. And change it to glance. Yep, the notification is also here if you want to choose a notification. But I'll just change the name to glance. Now I have a glance target along with my watch up target here. And if I run the glance target, I'll see the glance over here. And this is where the glance of all applications will come side by side in a page controller. If you want to use page controller in your application instead of this navigation that we saw initially for your watch app, then instead of pushing this thing, what you can do, you select your main interface controller and just choose its next page. Let me just uh, use another interface controller so that we will have three controller side by side that you can show in a page view. Change the color of this one to let's say something else. So Now you see these dots are coming at the bottom and you can kind of swipe through to display different uh, screens. But you cannot combine both. So if you are using <coughs> a page based navigation, you can't use the other type, you can't push. And <coughs> if you're using push, you can't use page, page based navigation. There are a few other controllers. Uh, other controls which are available. Um, one of them is map. You can display a map there. But map on watch is very limited. You can just show a point to user. Or uh, it's basically you can't zoom the map or zoom in or zoom out. Uh, that's not possible. You can show, show the current location of the user if you want to. And um, you, you know if you are guiding user to a certain direction, you can show the next point that the user needs to go to. The it's basically you can provide them a walking trail or walking direction. It's mostly used for direction or if you are using a using some kind of application where you need to guide the user to an address, you can put a map there uh, to help user to find the place. I'll show you an example of map also. There is a sample project that's provided by Apple which is called Watch Catalog. It has got all the different controls. Uh, you have all these different things. You have switch, buttons, and everything. You have um, one of them is map. And this is where it shows the map. And uh, you know, this is currently in Apple location. And you can, by finger, you can't you know, zoom in and zoom out. But you can put a button to zoom in and zoom out of map. If you want to you know, take you to a different location, you put a button again to do that. And you also have tables, list view, and uh, if you want to display certain things in, in a list view, you can do that. And on top of a row, you can take user to a detail, more detailed view. There is another thing that I want to talk about, which is called uh, menus. For any particular screen, uh, screen, you know, whenever user is on a, on, on any screen, let's say, or user is on the first screen, I want to display user a set of menus that, uh, or um, set of actions that he can take on this uh, page. One of them is, you know, you can put buttons on the screen. That is one way of doing things. Another way of doing things is you put a menu. There is a menu component here. You drag the menu to your controller. And you can have up to maximum four uh, menu items, one to four. So let's say I just choose two for now. And you can have a image for that. 
and you can have a title for a menu item. Let's say I just uh, want to uh, choose a system item which is like okay, accept, and I change the title to accept. Then another menu item can be okay, decline. So these are the two menu items that I have. How do I go to the menu? You basically hard press on the button to bring the menu. So this is where you can let user do certain things. And on top of the screen, let's say you want to present a different screen. Uh, on top of the button, you want to present a different screen to the user. It's useful for things like, OK, uh, if you're having a uh, music player application on your iPhone, and basically you have a uh, bunch of controls here. That's you on the main screen you show, which is the current music that, that's being played. And you want to provide a next button or the previous button to user to go to the you know, next music in the playlist or the previous music in the playlist. You can do things like, OK, if I want to use another menu item, which is, let's say, I have uh, play. I have pause. I have let's say supple, and let's say I have repeat. <laughs> now I have this this buttons here, four buttons here, and based on that, uh, whatever action user takes, I can make changes to my icon application. Is there any uh, additional stuff to put playlists? Hmm? Playlist. Playlist. Yeah, yeah, you can, uh, like these are the custom ones that are available, uh, the standard ones, but you can choose your custom one, and you can, let's say, playlist, but then you need to provide your own image for this one. Let's say, I Choose this happy word icon for now, but there is a style guide that you need to follow. I'm not sure if this is going to work, but let's see. This is really big. It needs to kind of, but you can see the playlist is coming over here. So, a yeah, bunch of standard ones, but then you can use whatever you like. Again, while presenting different controllers or multiple controllers, we saw how to kind of push and we saw how to use a pack and a page based nav navigation. But then uh, we can use another one, which is the model transition. The model is something that will come from the bottom of the screen and you can dismiss. It comes from the bottom of the screen, then you have a cancel button. On automatically and yeah, dismiss. Again, on the menu, let's say you want more than four items, because the maximum you can have is four. In the menu, if you want more than four items, you can, on top of a button, you can present a model, which have more buttons uh, in it, and you can take action on the model. So yeah, this is about uh, the view components. Any questions so far? Okay. Now the question comes, how do you pass data from your watch app to your um, iPhone application? There are a few ways to do it. Uh, one of them is they, they share certain uh, resources with each other like database files or the, uh, the file system. Also, they also have some shared storage like user defaults. So you can use those things to pass data from your watch app to uh, the iPhone application. Also, there's another application that I recently <coughs> uh, saw where they, uh, this guy is using something interesting. Let me see, where is the application? Okay. 
but then you can use the same technique that he, the game developers use, kind of uh, uh, peer connection. So if you establish a connection with your iPhone application all the time, although this is not the recommended way of, of doing things, but you can use a, a peer connection to change things on the iPhone application also. So this about the presentation, uh, you know, what you can do with Watch app. Uh, there are a few other controls which are like, uh, you know, date and timer that you can use depending on if you want to show users a date and time. Instantly, I can think about certain applications which will be using Watch app, uh, you know, uh, probably to start with. Let's say, thinking about Singapore, right? Um, we have a SBS Transit mobile application where you can see uh, when is the next bus coming, right? And you can have a companion app on watch which basically doesn't tell you anything other than when is the next bus coming so the next bus is in 10 minutes to your nearest MRT or whatever next bus is in 20 minutes so those kind of apps I can think in Singapore's context that you can kind of start thinking about but other than that you can have apps like let's say Twitter currently you can't have you don't have a text component where you can type things uh, like in Android uh, uh, watch, I think they have a text field where you can type things. Uh, but on iPhone watch, it's more like a view component where you, the view is presented uh, on your watch app, but the actual code runs in your iPhone application. But you can display things like how many likes, how many tweets, and all, all those kind of things you can display. But probably in 2015, when the watch kit is available to general public or general developers, other than uh, the enrolled Apple developers currently in beta version, we might have other options that will be added to the SDK. But at this point, you can present these controls uh, to users, maps, tables, you know, labels and buttons, all these things, and your code will run on the iPhone application. Okay? Any questions? If not, I'll be here uh, throughout the hackathon. Um, if you have any questions related to Watch app or iOS in general, you can approach me and you can ask me questions. Um, and where do you learn these things? Basically, there is a Watch app uh, programming guide by Apple. Um, but this provides you basically the general information and doesn't provide you much. You have you know this watch app and then this glances and notification. There is very minimal code there. However, you can go to this site that I talked about, rayvandalish.com, and there there is video tutorials. Uh, you can watch there. There are some written tutorials also. In the video tutorials, you have uh, this watch kit series which kind of touches upon many things that I talked today. Uh, other than that, they are coming up with a book, a uh, watch kit book, which you can pre-order. And uh, it's $44. But for this hackathon, I, I got a discount code for you guys, 10% uh, discount for any books that you buy on base site. Uh, it's called Hackathon. And if you buy any books today or tomorrow from the site, you can have a 10% discount uh, on that. It also has got you know game development books and uh, books for Swift and other things. So a bunch of other books. So you can get 10% discount on all the books. So yeah, but this is valid until tomorrow. The discount code is Hackathon. Yeah, thank you guys.